Welcome to Geography at Stratford Grammar School. I'm Miss Eels and I'll be running you through um, the experience of studying uh, this subject at our school and I really hope that you consider joining our community and uh, most importantly studying geography with us too. Okay, why study geography? It's a great subject. It sits really well alongside um, all other subjects as a third choice for A level because it provides an extension to your skills uh, regardless of what you study. So for example, if you're studying arts and creative subjects, it will provide you a more scientific analytical counterbalance to those skills. If you're studying sciences, it will provide you with the kind of soft skills that are needed for you know, discussion. It will provide you with essay writing skills um, that will kind of provide additional um, elements to your skill base that you perhaps won't get by studying you know three pure science subjects that's why it's often regarded as a, a facilitating subject that will keep your options for university open it won't close any doors for you in fact universities quite like it they like geographers because they know we've got a wide range of skills you'll love our fieldwork opportunities and um, we do four days of fieldwork as a minimum it's um, a great chance to, to get to know your group really well and I, i'll tell you by the end of the two year um you'll really enjoy your geography class it becomes a real tight-knit community and part of that is the experiences that we share as a result of those fieldwork days there aren't many subjects which deals with some of the world's most current and relevant issues. We look at the role of global organisations such as the World Health Organisation, we look at climate change, really modern contemporary stuff. And also another big draw that unlike other subjects you will get an opportunity to do coursework in, in geography. I think this is a good thing. It gives you a boost for the final exams. Our students do very well in this coursework and you have a lot of control over what you do. So if you choose something that you're really interested in I can guarantee you, you'll work hard at it and you've got a great chance of getting a high grade. Why study geography here? Well, I, I think that if you spoke to our students, they would uh, tell you that we offer a lot to them in terms of um, the opportunities that they have here. Um, the coursework I've just referenced, students, students get a free choice over that. We're able to do that because we can give students some really powerful coaching because we've got small tutorial led class sizes, which means we can give one to one support. And um, that means our results are 7% higher than the national average and we get grades and students get grades that they can be really proud of. We give students the opportunity to attend lectures. One of the, the key um, features of supporting students to attain the top grades of A and A star is giving students the opportunity to extend themselves beyond their study in the classroom and that's why students have the opportunity to attend uh, lectures um, to, to try and extend their knowledge beyond that learned in the classroom and we get strong results every year at the places ahead of other institutions I joined the school in 2013. We have always had the 100% pass rate, carrying all students through to A level with integrity. Um, we get strong results in terms of progress, regularly placing us in the top um, third of the country in terms of progress for our students. We study um, the AQA uh, syllabus in A level geography, which is split into three components, and I'll talk to you about those components um, in a moment. The first component is physical geography, and that is delivered by my colleague, Miss King. You will not find a more knowledgeable teacher of physical geography. And we all know that one of the, the leading factors determining student attainment and progress is the, the strong subject knowledge of their teachers. Miss King is our physical geography specialist. She's trained in physical geography, and um, she's extremely knowledgeable in her field of study. Myself and Mr. Whiting deliver the field, uh, the, the human geography, uh, element of the specification and then also there's component three the geographic fieldwork investigation and um, I lead on the delivery of that. So in physical geography you study three units water and carbon, coasts and hazards. The question types varied you get short levels of response, uh, brief four mark answers and also extended prose 
um, nine mark questions which will be similar to the type of questions you get at GCSE and then kind of mini essays uh, which are worth 20 marks um, and that's where there is a step up from GCSE in terms of the extended writing. Okay, one of the physical geography units you study is water and carbon cycles. It's uh, a little step up from the, the water cycle that you will have uh, studied at GCSE level. And it's related to the role of water um, in the global um, kind of physical landscape. And carbon cycles, obviously, is one of the most important topics for geographers to discuss and uh, learn about. Um, it's related to the role of carbon in our global climate and the circulation of carbon within our kind of um, global system. So really uh, important geography that has um, important um, modern contexts um, to which it can be applied to. Some of you might have studied coasts at GCSE. It's not more of the same, but one of the reasons why we study the AQA system, uh, syllabus is because our students uh, study AQA and study coasts, and it gives them a really um, coherent transition from GCSE to A-level. That's not to say if you haven't studied coasts at GCSE, you'll struggle with this because you won't. Um, it's just that it is taking what many of you already know and just adding an extra layer and building on it. So you'll learn about the processes that led to this uh, mass movement um, shown in the photograph on the, on, the, on the slide in front of you. But you'll also learn about the human implications of um, coastal processes. And then there's the old favourite hazards, any geographer uh, at GCSE, any good geographer will by now be able to explain this pattern of earthquakes to you. Again, it's not more of the same. I know that students study earthquakes and volcanoes at GCSE, but it does take it up a level into some more in-depth theory on plate tectonics. But you also go on to study further hazards like uh, tropical storms, again, and um, something that you've got some knowledge on from GCSE, but this will extend you further. And also, uh, other hazards that you won't have studied, like wildfires, for example. You'll also learn about uh, tropical storms. This is the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. And you don't just learn about hazards from the kind of physical processes and the kind of physical perspective, but you learn the impact of tropical storms like this upon human communities. And that links nicely to human geography, which is again split into three units. We've got global systems, change in places in contemporary urban environments, just like the physical geography, that's worth 40% of your A level, and it's assessed in a very similar way. You'll have four mark questions, which are just knowledge recall. You'll have six mark questions, which are to do with analyzing graphs. You'll get some nine mark questions, similar to GCSE style questions. And then you'll get the same extended prose, the same 20 mark questions. OK, my favourite unit, um, the study of global systems and global governance, a really important unit that studies the impact of globalisation on um, global communities. It looks at the role of international organisations like the World Health Organisation in the UN. So if you're interested in politics and political geography, this is a unit that I really think that you'll enjoy. The unit that I also probably most enjoy teaching is uh, Changing Places. It's all about how our communities and our cities and our environments around us change and um, what that means for people. Um, you'll study two case studies, you'll study a local um, example in the northern quarter and you'll study a specific example of a distant place and we'll look in depth at Detroit because it's a really interesting city with a lot of um, changes uh, that have occurred and those changes have had massive impacts on the lives of uh, people living there. And the final unit, again, there's strong links to the work you've studied in GCSE, so you do have strong foundations for this, but we look at cities and contemporary urban environments we look at in-depth examples of two cities um, and we learn about how they've changed, 
Um, we learn, learn about sustainability. We learn about um, specific characteristics of cities in terms of their physical landscapes and their climate. Um, so again, a great grounding from GCSE, but it will push you on and extend you too. And our final component is a geographical fieldwork investigation. I've already mentioned this, and it's one of our real strengths that students can choose their own investigations. So, for example, this year's cohort, some have studied to do something really topical and relevant and study the link between coronavirus um, death rates and deprivation uh, within our own city of Manchester. Um, in the past, students who've wanted to go on and study, for example, medicine, have done their fieldwork investigation into health inequalities in Manchester. So you really can link it to what it is you want to go on to study at university. And as I said, we get great results for this because we give structured support um, within the, the guide, guidance and rules outlined by AQA. And also the fieldwork that we do, the four days fieldwork we do as preparation for this, prepare students really well for their geographical investigations. I've already mentioned the great enrichment opportunities that we've got uh, here. Um, you'll love the fieldwork um, opportunities that we have, and it's one of the, the big draws of geography to students. We also uh, visit universities when we can and lectures to broaden knowledge. It's one of the most important things you can do to get an A and A star is to, to do things that go beyond the syllabus to broaden your knowledge. Many of our sixth form geographers act as our ambassadors. Um, the, the big thing our school will offer you is leadership. And leadership is a really desirable thing for university applications. Uh, students help us out at open evening. They support us as lower school teaching assistants. All of this boosts their UCAS applications so that when it comes down, when it comes down to writing them, they've got plenty to say to support them. The great thing about geography is its flexibility. Our geographers go on to do all sorts of careers. They go on to even study geography at university, but even after studying geography at university, it keeps your options open. You can go into accountancy, education, journalism. You could do a, a further postgraduate qualification in law, um, or you could go directly into those um, paths as undergraduate um, studies. It sits really well with medicine because it offers a really um, useful set of skills that perhaps you won't get through studying a sheer science-based curriculum. So that's one of the great things about studying geography and one of the things that I think our students most appreciate when it comes time to applying for university. Right, drawing to an end then of this presentation, um, I wanted to get some students to uh, speak to you over the uh, top of this PowerPoint presentation about why they enjoy geography, but those plans have been scuppered as a result of the new lockdown uh, procedures that have been implemented. I have asked them for some quotes, and this is this is what they have provided me with. Um, I think that what you'll most enjoy about A-level geography is the sheer variety of the topic, from physical to human geography, from a science to a humanity subject, there's loads of different uh, topics to get your teeth into. Um, with, you know, between six and ten students, it's a chance to debate topical issues in a university style setting. I've already talked about the big draw of our fieldwork projects and students agree that it's, it's great that you have an option of what topic to choose. Uh, we're all specialists in our field, that's actually important. Not all geography teachers who teach physical geography are physical geography specialists. Not all human geography is a human geography specialist. We are, and um, as a result, we really know our, our stuff. And as we know, subject knowledge is one of the most important factors contributing to high students' grades overall. Um, a lot of students who stayed um, on from lower years um, who stayed on with us have stayed because they know us and um, we've got a good relationship with the students from GCSE and we know them best, their strengths and weaknesses. We're joined every year by external students and they've settled in wonderfully this year and I know that any external who's choosing to join us for geography will be, be made feel very welcome. That's the end of the presentation. If you've got any questions, do email me. That's my direct email address uh, on the, the screen right now. And any general queries about sixth form, there's your uh, email address for that.
We're always posting updates about applications and um, you can find out what our sick forms like by following us on our Twitter account at Stretford Sick. Um, so yes, I look forward to seeing you in September and please, if you've got any further questions, do contact us.